say I've been getting tatted. They say they like my thing. Yeah, I say that I'm flattered. They ask me where I've been. I say I've been getting tatted. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over eight things you need to consider before buying a BMW M52 engine. And you can also say this is going to apply for buying any kind of BMW before considering to buy any kind of BMW regardless of engine. These are things you need to consider, need to have and need to know about before you go and make your purchase. As I know what ends up happening is a lot of people see BMW, you know, it's very overrated, you know, because of what it delivers and obviously the way they perform and reliability. So people will jump to it, but a lot of people are not aware of when they buy one, how affordable, how easy to maintain, and a lot of other problems that these cars can suffer with that you guys need to know. So let's go over a load of the things that you need to consider before buying a BMW. Okay guys, so as you'll see right here, this is my BMW with the M52 engine. Now, as you guys know, these come in many, many different variants. And most of the options why people go for these, especially in the USA, is for the 535i and the M52 engine. Now in the UK, most people go for these E60s with the M57 or the M47 engine, which is the 520 diesel and the 530 diesel as well as the 535 diesel. As well as some people go for these based on the V8 engine, which is a 550i. Now, the first thing about these cars, which anybody will know when they're going to buy a BMW and they speak to someone regarding it, is that people will try and scare you off these cars by saying how high maintenance they are, people thinking about, and usually it's a lot of people like, you know, people years ago when, you know, people would work for half the money that you do these days when things were very expensive and would say to you to not buy one of these, they're very high maintenance, very expensive. So that's the first thing that people will try and scare you off of buying a BMW thinking because now they're not what they are years ago, now they're full of electrics. And you know, I understand that from someone years ago's perspective, as I've said to many people I speak to are old, years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do their job and now I'm doing a job that they wouldn't be able to do regarding the electronics for BMWs. But if you are clued up, if you are willing to learn, if you are, you know, devoted to this engine and the brand, you can go and learn a lot there is to know regarding this car and it will pay off massively. Driving these cars is like driving no other car. They are massively fun and very easy to work on as well. Thirdly, you'll be very proud of yourself when working on these cars as well for what you can accomplish. These cars are built like no other and the way they're engineered is very, very clever. BMW knew what they were doing. It's the only car I can truly say has been engineered to such a standard that the way it was, and this E60 is way ahead of its game, and if anyone understood the way the modules work on this and the way they are, this car is way ahead of its time. The second one is these cars are actually a lot easier to work on than people actually realize. Now, what will happen is you'll ring a garage for a quote to remove the manifold or do a job on it, and they will charge you through the roof. Some of them will say they ain't even got time to do it. They'll make it, it's a big job when really it ain't. The majority of the time that garages will refuse to work on these is purely because they have no skill. Most garages have come out of being a Ford mechanic many, many years ago. And if you look at garages, the majority of them are very, very old school. It's like I get on my channel a load of old mechanics that used to tell me that I couldn't do what they could do, this, that, the other. But now they can't do what I can do. Hence why they say they love their E39 series because their brains wouldn't be able to keep up with the, you know, so this side of the 60 side of all the computer side of things, which my brain can and their brain can't. And that's why they're still driving an E39 and E46. And that's why I'm driving E60s going on to F series. You know, these cars are very easy to work on if you're willing to put the time in. As I said, most people will scare you off. Most garages will scare you off and tell you they don't want to work in it or they'll try and charge you £600 and most people will go and pay that. Do not be fooled if you go to a garage and they try and charge you £500 for your oil filter housing. That's if you've got the M52 engine. Garages will try and charge you a fortune for repairs on these cars. You have to learn to work on them yourself. It is a pure fact. You will get a lot of enjoyment from working on this and these cars are enjoy a, a great fun to work on. As I said, they are not bad cars at all. And trust me, you get more satisfaction knowing you've done it yourself and you've done it right the first time because if garages don't understand the system, what they'll end up doing is when they remove the valve cover, 
they won't re- relearn the Valvetronic motor conditions and anything below, below 07 has to be relearned. And if it ain't relearned, you'll chuck a load of codes and you'll be back at the garage again. A lot of garages who have no experience with this engine will do that and you'll end up with them problems. The next one, which is number three on my list, is parts are very cheap on this engine. Do, and they're coming down year after year after year. When this engine was first released, um, they were very, very expensive. And parts are very cheap if you get the M57 diesel, if you get the 550i. They're not as expensive as the M52. The most expensive things on these M52s is the vanos solenoids and the water pump. That is it. The rest of it is extremely cheap. Oil filter housing gasket, CCV valve cover gasket is a normal price. should pay for any other car. Do not be fooled when garages are telling you everything is expensive on BMW because this is something I get a lot. Nothing is expensive on these if you're doing it yourself. It will cost you just the part, which when you consider that, £300 for a water pump or £300 for solenoids, excluding the label, all you paid for is the part. These cars become very cheap cars to maintain and to run. And they end up becoming a pleasure to drive. Like I tell all you guys, I love and I am devoted to this M52 engine. You, this engine is like no other. And like I've told many of you guys, I prefer this way over any other naturally aspirated engine BMW has ever brung. A lot of people will not like me for saying that, but that is the truth. You guys know why I've got the M52, because I prefer this much more than over the diesel. I love the M52 engine. It just It's a completely different engine. Most people with diesels who have never driven this engine wouldn't know, but this engine is an absolute cracker. People say about the M53, but unfortunately, M53 is just like M54. It suffers big, big issues with the high-pressure fuel pump and the injectors. And I've seen many, many, many people, even on this channel, where their M53s are running worse than the M52s. And that's because the problems on them are just so severe. The engines clog up with carbon buildup. This M52 engine does not. This M52 engine does not suffer with carbon buildup. And if you're looking to buy one of these, search around for parts. There's many different places ebay amazon even bmw now bmw parts are very cheap for this engine as the years have gone on they were expensive and i will state that they were very expensive to get parts for this engine but they have gone down over the years the next one guys do not be scared to give this car a go yourself if you are thinking of buying one i'm telling you now the moment you've considered buying one you have to know you've got to have in your mind that you're ready to do the work on them that's necessary to maintain these cars a lot of people go out and buy these BMs, buy them, because like I said, from what they've heard and what people go about them saying they're fast, or some people, like the people in the Toyotas, let's just mention them, they like to come and give out that BMW's crap, BMW's unreliable, usually it's because they get smoked by these cars and then that's why they try and get them. And then guess what? Then they realise they can't even afford them because they want to treat them like a Toyota. But when it comes to maintenance, as you guys know, anyone else usually go for a Toyota, especially in the UK, it's because they can't afford BMW and can't afford the price of it. So they go for a Toyota because they have no mechanical knowledge. Their brains are not set like ours in the BMW community. They are very poor. It's like the mini community where they can't afford the parts for BMW. So they try and run them as cheap as possible. Then realize running them cheap is their downfall. And then try and criticize the engine because they were trying to run the car cheap and realize it's not going to be their little Toyota. Unfortunately, I redline this car a lot. Let me tell you guys right now, this car is ultra reliable. Why? Because I maintain it myself and I do the regular checks on it and because I know what to do if something wants to go wrong. Where these little Toyota guys unfortunately don't know nothing. They don't know their ass from their elbow. So, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to badmouth the car. Let them keep badmouthing because you guys know I'm the protector of this brand. This brand right here, I protect with my heart and soul. This brand means the world to me and this is why I do this with passion and pride for you guys. The next one, guys. Do not listen to people who will tell you to avoid BMW. The majority of people that will tell you to avoid this car are people who are not living such a comfortable life as you are. The way they see it, if you've got the money to go out and buy one of them and they ain't, they're going to try and make you persuade you to buy someone like they've got because they're going to be jealous because they can't afford to buy this. But if you're devoted and you really want to go and buy one, go and buy one. Do not listen to what people say to them. Like I said to you, the majority of people that will tell you not to buy this car will be Toyota people because they got like I said, had a bad experience in their past and they know they can't afford it and want to run it with cheap parts as they wish or put any, all the cheap parts on it. That's the way they like to run and this is why they can't afford to own a BMW. The same, same with the Honda guys, the same with the Volkswagen guys and Audi guys. The reason they don't drive BMW is because they can't afford it. This is like, 
it, in the UK are more upper class car. Volkswagen and Audi is more of the poorer class car who don't want us, who can't afford really the parts. That's what we class it here. Mercedes and BMW are the two luxury brands here, which require a lot of maintenance, expensive parts, and people can't afford it. And it's all out of jealousy. A lot of people get will get out of jealous because you're going to drive a BMW and you're going to drive, be driving something better than them. And they're probably jealous that you're going to be more skilled than them because you'll end up learning how to repair it and they won't. And that's the downer just on its own for them. So people will try and talk you out of owning one of these cars. Take my word on that. And if they do, just remember, go with what you want. If you want to learn BMW, I advise you and encourage you, go and get yourself a BMW. You will not regret it. They are very, very fun to work on, very fun to learn, even with the computer systems. The next one is be real when you're going to consider a BMW. Some parts are not cheap. It comes with the price of BMW. You have to remember the car you're driving was a 50 to 60K car. It was a lease vehicle. The mega, 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 mega rich leased them, drove them to the ground for the three years, and then they're passed on to people like us to repair them and recover them for another 100,000 miles. But these engines are bulletproof, providing you make sure you look after them and give them the right parts that's needed. Do not try and fit any kind of Chinese parts to these cars because these cars will, you know, spit it out. They don't like it and they will let you down and that's when they become unreliable. Be real with yourself. When buying a car, ask yourself a question. Do you make enough money a month to afford to run this car? Do you make enough money a month to go and buy parts when needed? You know, you have to overhaul everything. Do not think of buying one of these and trying to just replace one part when it fails. That is when they will let you down at the most needed time in your life. This is when they will let you down even when you're on the highway. Um, when you're going to an emergency, they will let you down. Overhaul it all so you can go for 100k with trouble-free motoring because that's usually the case with people and that is why they always have a resentment against BMW. And that's the only thing they ever remember when this car ever let when this car let them down. And that's why they find it unreliable because you get a lot of people going to buy these just buy them and expect to do nothing to them. You cannot buy this car and expect to do nothing and it's going to be reliable. What you hear about reliable, and I'm just going to state this for a lot of people, when people are saying these cars are reliable, it's due because they are looking after them themselves and have done all the maintenance needed. That's why they're reliable. Like I could say, mine is reliable. I've covered over 40,000 miles since I replaced everything with no issues. That's reliable. They are not reliable unless you do that. So if you're planning to buy one just to drive it around thinking you're going to do nothing and you're going to look cool, you're buying these for the wrong reason. You're not going to look cool at all because it's going to leave you stranded like it does many, many people and lets them down. And as electronic failures as well on top of that, you have to know what you're buying and you have to know what you're doing when buying these cars. So we move on to number seven. If you're planning on buying one of these cars with, this, with any engine, which will be an E60, E90, no matter what the car is, make sure you invest in ISTA. ISTA is the integrated service technical application that the BMW dealers use for BMW and Mini. It's a diagnostic system which programs and codes and it also will show every single fault code that you have properly. You won't have to end up using your cheap scanners which a lot of people end up using for these cars and then realize why they can't find the right code for their car or the right fault. I would advise if you know anything about input, avoid that because it does not give you your fault codes and it gives them all in German. I am the only one in English. So any of you that's using input in German, you know, you've got no chance. It will, you need to use ISTA to get the right accurate fault codes and to be able to diagnose your car because it runs test plans. It's what BMW uses these cars. You cannot use your normal scan. If that was the case, BMW dealer techs would not be using their high rated system to diagnose these cars and then always coming out of your problem fixed. You would then be going to all these other garages and nobody would know what they're doing. The reason BMW always fix it when it goes into dealers is because they use that system. Without that system, anyone is screwed. And I'm telling you that now. With all the electronics on this car, anyone will be finished. And it's a true fact. Like I said, ISTA is the main thing if you're planning to buy any BMW. E60, E90, E39, E46, any F10, F30, F20, all of them need ISTA. It is crucial for running the BMW that you have that program to make sure that you get the right diagnosis and the right repair for your car and you don't miss anything because P codes can send you in, around in circles. Like for instance, when you scan with a cheap scanner, the vanos solenoids will come up as the camshaft. When it isn't the camshaft on an ISTA scan, it will come up as the vanos inlet and vanos outlet. That is the difference and that is why it's very crucial that you use the right software for these cars. So the next one guys, which will be the end one is providing you're willing to do everything as I've said in this video, you will then have 
a strong, reliable, and very, very good BMW all round. And no, this isn't just for the M52 engine. As I've said, this relates to all engines in BMW, providing you overhaul them, which let me tell you, if any of you got the M57 or M57N, that engine is super cheap and reliable at all times, providing you maintain it. Their parts are so cheap, like the M54 engine still, they run on nearly the same parts, equivalent. So they're very, very cheap to maintenance compared to the M52, the M52 and the M53 are the two most expensive engines to maintain on an E60. Um, but realistically, they're not expensive providing you have the money. You know, there's one thing I've always, always learned when owning these cars is that if you're planning to buy it, you have to have the money to repair it. And if you're gonna repair it, repair it right. You don't wanna go, go a couple of months and end up back doing the same job you've done twice. You know, and that goes for CCV. If you're gonna replace your CCV, make sure you use a proper original part, same valve cover, get a good name brand, there's many out there. Same with the oil filter housing gasket. Make sure you replace it with the dealer one. It's the only one that I know does not leak. You know, van or soul noise, make sure you use dealer ones. There's a lot of parts you need to know which go, and this is what my channel's for. And I hope my channel's helping the many people out there with this engine and with other engines galore. And I'm just trying to let you guys know that these are the things you need to consider before going to buy a BMW. If you are new to the channel as well and you're planning on buying one, consider. Do you want to get yourself involved in this? Have you got the time and are you devoted to the brand? There's a lot to consider before just going out and buying a BMW for the name and for looking good. You know, you can't buy these cars for a, a status symbol. That's what a lot of people do. They buy these cars to look nice on the drive or to have it as a status symbol to their friends. That's the wrong thing to do because when it lets you down, everyone's going to be laughing at you and then that's why a lot of people get angry, get rid of them and never want to go back again against BMW. That's not the case. These cars are not bad cars and any car that could be brung to me, I can repair and I can make it ultra reliable. So that's why it don't ever bother me of these cars. I can own as many as I want. I know they're going to run forever with me trouble free because as I've always said, if anything was to go wrong, I'll just pull the engine out and put another one in. It's not hard on this car at all. I've done it about four times on this engine, not with this car with previous models I've had and it's been no issues at all. Okay guys, so as you've just seen now, I've just gone over the eight things you need to consider before you buy a BMW with the M52 engine. Now, as I've just explained to you, there is a lot you need to factor in before going to buy one of these. I hope these things will clarify a few details for people who are new coming into the BMW world, who are on my channel considering buying a BMW. And these are the things that you really need to consider before you go out your way and actually buy one of these cars because there is a lot involved and there's a lot of time and you need to have a lot of time, passion and devotion for these cars. I mean, a lot of people do work a normal job and the thing is if you are using it for 25 miles there 25 miles back it's not really a good car stop start these cars don't like that's one thing especially on the m52 that will destroy the water pump the stop starts because of the amount of heat cycles apparently after seven times from what i know the water pump ends up overheating itself from too much stop start they don't like it and it's something you really need to consider um before you go and buy one of these cars have you got the money to look after it have you got the time to devote to it because there's a, a lot of the time where it will put people off the road more than it's on the road and you have to be aware of that that's why i've always got another car even though i know this car's reliable but you don't take any chances so it is always good to have another car do not ever have a bmw as your one only car i always tell everyone that always have a second car because it pays off big time if this car was ever to go down or have an issue and you ain't got time to repair it but you need to have a car on the road so I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. This is BMW Dr. Dean. If you have enjoyed it, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.